ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 61st Annual Freedom Banquet. We are going to start on time. Amen, Amen right? Amen. <laughs> and we're going to end on time. That is my goal tonight. I'm Shannon Sims with Fox 45 and ABC 22. I would like to introduce you to the dais, and I will call each person's name, and I ask that you would save your applause until the end. I'd first like to ask that Reverend Jer Jerome McCory, President of the Adam Project, Miss Candace McCory, First Lady of the Adams Project, Bishop Richard Cox, President of SCLC Dayton Chapter, Miss Patrice Hunter, First Lady of Macedonia Baptist Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Jameson Hunter, Pastor of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. Ms. Dawn Carter, First Lady of Zion Baptist Church. Reverend Rockney Carter, Senior Pastor of Zion Baptist Church. Sharon Platt, President of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Dayton Chapter. Reverend Corey Cunningham, Senior Pastor and Founder of the Inspiration Church. Bishop Mark McGuire, Senior Pastor, The Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. Ms. Helen Schooler, First Lady of St. Peter's Missionary Baptist Church. Reverend William Schooler, Pastor. Pastor Schooler, excuse me, of St. Peter's Missionary Baptist Church. Ms. Jennifer Matthews Coulter, Gospel Singer. And now on this side, I'd ask that Herman Branham, First President, Dayton Unit NAACP. Ms. Ms. Diane Brannon, wife of the first vice president of the Dayton Unit NAACP. Mr. Tom Roberts, third vice president, Dayton Unit NAACP. Reverend Crystal Walker, secretary of the Dayton NAACP. Ms. Janice Kimball, treasurer of the Dayton NAACP. Ms. Dorothy Trees, assistant secretary of the Dayton Unit. Ms. Diane Williams, Chair, Membership of Life Membership Committees, also on the Dayton Chapter of the NAACP. Willie Terrell, Jr., our Scholarship Committee for the Dayton Unit NAACP. Carol Perkins, Dayton Youth Council. Raja Perkins, President of Dayton Youth Council. Cedric McGee, Chair of AXO Youth Programs for the Dayton Unit of the NAACP. And now I continue with the top tier of our dais. Mr. Richard Clay Dixon, President, Central State University, Dayton Alumni Chapter. Dr. James Hammond, husband of Mrs. Hammond. Dr. Cynthia Jackson Hammond, President of Central State University. The Honorable Ronald Winburn, State Representative, 40th House District of Ohio. Ms. Iris Winburn, First Lady of Mr. Honorable Winburn. The Honorable Annette McGee Wright, Community Service Award recipient. The Honorable Francis McGee, Community Service Award recipient. The Honorable Mike Turner, U.S. Congressman, 3rd Congressional District of, the, of Ohio. Mr. Edward Dixon, President and Award recipient. Mr. Amos Otis, Founder, President and CEO, Sobran Incorporated. The Honorable Yvette McGee Brown, Justice, the Supreme Court of Ohio, the Ohio Judicial System. Ms. Gwen Blair, wife of Honorary Chair Blair, and Oscar Blair, founder and president and CEO, Priority Building Services. <laughs> the Honorable Derek Forward, he is the president of the Dayton Unit NAACP. Ms. Jean Forward, First Lady of the NAACP. Ms. Tanea Bailey, President of Little John Jr. NAACP Youth Council. Ms. Ludell, Chair, Freedom Fund Committee. Mr. Marvin Dale, Husband of the Freedom Fund Committee Chair. The Honorable Gary Leitzel, Mayor of the City of Dayton. Mr. Quincy Pope, Sr., Chief of Police, City of Trotwood. The Honorable Judy Dodge, President of the Montgomery County Commissioners. Mr. Phil Plummer, Montgomery County Sheriff. Father Benjamin Sperry Hardy, Senior Rector at St. Margaret Episcopal Church. Ms. Stacy Thompson, Vice President of Community Development Banking, Key Bank. 
the Honorable Jesse Gooding, the 18th President and President Emeritus of the Dayton Unit NAACP. And I'm sorry, but we have one more before you clap. Lorenzo Harris, if you could please stand. I apologize. Now we can all clap. Well, we are excited that you are here with us tonight to break bread and to learn more about the NAACP. We will now ask that the presentation of the colors. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting Still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free and the every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing Rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. 
sing a song full of the hope that the present has taught brought us facing the rising sun of our new day begun let us march on till victory is one. Let's continue to give the Wayne High School Junior ROTC Color Guard another round of applause. As well as a round of applause for uh, Miss Jennifer Coulter for that beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner and the Negro National Anthem. We would now like to ask that Father Spear Hardy come and give us the invocation. Can we stand, please? Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for the NAACP, the nation's oldest and largest civil rights organization. And for this 97th anniversary, of the Dayton unit of the NAACP. So thank you for dedicated workers, organizers, leaders, and members who continue to fight for social justice for all Americans. Grant that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart and that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicion disappear, and hatred cease. That our divisions being healed we may live in justice and peace. Yes. Guide the people of this land mm -hmm. and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, 
and grant that we may serve you in them and love one another as you love us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. And give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to find joy in knowing you. Yes. To the President of the United States, Barack Obama, and members of the Cabinet, the governors of states and mayors of cities, and to all in administrative authority, grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. Amen. To senators and representatives and those who make our laws in states, cities, and towns, give courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. To the judges and officers of our courts, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice served. Finally, teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens, that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. Now we ask, Lord, that you bless this food has been prepared for us. Bless it to our use and us to your service, and help us always to be mindful of the needs of others. Yes. Amen. I am, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here to the Dayton Unit NAACP 61st Annual Freedom Fund Banquet. We are so fortunate this year to have as our guest speaker, Justice for the Supreme Court of Ohio and the Ohio judicial system, the Honorable Yvette McGee Brown. I just want to say welcome again. I am elated to have two outstanding citizens, community-oriented businessmen serving as honorary co-chairman of our banquet tonight. We are so fortunate. Mr. Oscar Blair, President and CEO, Priority Building Services. Let's thank him. Thank you so much. And then we have Mr. Amos L. Otis, Founder, President, and CEO, Soul Brand Incorporated. Welcome to both of you. I want to give a special welcome to you, the audience. For without you, we would not have a complete program. Thank you for your participation and your support. Right now, give yourselves a great hand Thank you and welcome. The Freedom Fund Banquet is the primary source of raising funds for our unit, which allows us to provide civil and human rights services for all mankind. The NAACP is a non partisan organization, and its membership is open to everyone. Membership is the lifeblood of this prestigious organization. Membership helps to sustain our services and our programs during the year. 
you only need to turn a couple of pages in the souvenir booklet and you will see a full report of the kind of activities that the NAACP is involved in. Our goals are to inform, educate, and empower. Our theme is history is in your hands. Your power, your decision. It's your choice. What will it be? Just remember, the power is in your hands. Make the decision. Vote, vote. And I'm only informing you. Again, I say welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming and enjoy your dinner. We now ask that the Honorable Mayor Gary Leitzel come forward. Thank you. On behalf of the City of Dayton and fellow Commissioners Lovelace, Williams, Joseph, and Whaley, I, I commend you all for coming out to this great event this evening on this wet day in Dayton. Now, I tend to defer the weather to a higher authority, and since the warranty on good weather has run out, I suggest you lobby Congressman Turner <laughs> over here, because he will be happy to take your complaint and go higher up. Anyway, <laughs> on page 14 in your booklet is a proclamation issued by my office, and I have a sneak backup copy right here that I snuck under the podium earlier. And I'm not going to read it because it consists of six whereas and one now therefore I. But it does kind of uh, tell you that this is the 61st celebration of this event and the 97th year of the NAACP Dayton chapter, which are pretty phenomenal, uh, really, for this, uh, for, for this town and, 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 and the longevity of the organization. Now, I'm not going to speak for much longer and I'm going to wrap it up, but I, I commend all of you for being here because it is civic-minded citizens like yourselves that make Dayton and the region a world-class city and a world-class place to be. And uh, don't give me a round of applause, give yourself another round of applause for being citizens of this region and for supporting the NAACP in its longevity and making this such a successful event. Thank you. And it is great to be a part of the Dayton community. I've been here only about a year and a couple months, and I, can, I have no complaints, none whatsoever. I would also now like for the Honorable Judy Dosh to come forth with proclamations and presentations. Well, good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I'm Montgomery County Commissioner Judy Dodge, and on behalf of my fellow commissioners, Dan Foley and Debbie Lieberman, we want to welcome you all to Dayton, Montgomery County. You know, it's kind of raining out there, but all I've seen tonight are a lot of smiles. So, there you go, exactly. Okay, now look in your book. I'm not going to read them all. I was told to read every single line of every single proclamation. But I said, no, 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 it takes too long. So please, there's a lot of great proclamation and wishes from the federal, state, and local level. So please take your time and read the proclamations. Now, it's also my honor and um, uh, duty to introduce, and um, I, here's what I want to do. I'm not going to introduce every single person, because again, this will take a half hour. All federal candidates and state candidates and local candidates, please stand up. The ones that are running first, let's, let's stand up if you're running for office. Stand up. Let's, let's give you a, a round of applause. Okay, now for the ones that are in office, the federal, state, and local officials 
please stand up. And we want to give you a real round of applause. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you all so much, and everyone, please have a wonderful evening. All right, well, I will tell you that we now have a video presentation coming to us from North Carolina, so I'd ask if the video presentation could begin. Good morning, NAACP. We certainly thank God for his grace and to our chair who has called us to be the face of hope, our president and CEO who has charged us to remind ourselves that there are more with us than there are against us, to all the members of the National Political Action Committee and to all of the members of the staff and to our vice chair and this convention uh, chairman. Why are we here this morning in this plenary and not in a workshop on voting rights. In the testimonial circle of my faith tradition, the saints often declare, if we ever needed the Lord, we sure do need him now. I want to, in the tradition of the hip hop tradition, sample from that faith tradition and say, if we ever needed to vote, we sure do need to vote now. For us, the right to vote is not just a constitutional matter but a right born out of struggle, out of sacrifice, and a gift from the God of justice, who 2,600 years ago had his prophet say to every nation, you must do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before your God. And 2,000 years ago had his son say that the least of these must be at the center of public policy. Think for a moment where we are in the time in which we're in, and you will understand why, if we never, ever needed to vote, we sure do need to vote now. Here we are today, Sister Dukes, 393 years since the first ship landed in Virginia to bring slaves. Here we are, Sister Coleman, where 242 years ago, Crispus Attucks was the first African American to die fighting for this country. 236 years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. 225 years since the Constitution was adopted. 225 years since we were fractionized in that Constitution and called three-fifths of a person. 183 years since Mexico outlawed slavery and 176 years since Texas revolted because they wanted to keep their slaves. 163 years since Harriet Tubman escaped slavery. 160 years since Frederick Douglass, since somebody just quoted him, actually delivered in his... Actually, actually delivered in his 4th of July speech that, that America's July 4th celebrations were fraud, bombast, hypocrisy until America did right by the sons and daughters of slaves. 149 years since the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation, 147 years since the end of the Civil War, 142 years since the ratification of the 15th Amendment, 118 years since the riots of the Wilmington, North Carolina to stop black political power, 108 years since the riots in Springfield, Illinois, 68 years since Smith versus Allwright opened up primaries for black people, 68 years since Promise King was denied the right to vote in Georgia in a primary, 58 years since Brown versus Board of Education, 57 years since the brutal murder of Emmett Till, 52 years since the sittings in Greensboro organized by a and and Bennett students, 46 years after Barbara Jordan was the first African American to sit in the Texas Senate, 48 years since Fannie Lou Hamer said there comes a time when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. 51 years since Dr. King said to the AFL-CIO that the only voting bloc that could transform America would be for blacks and labor and poor whites and Latinos to learn how to work together. 49 years since the murder of Mega Evers. 49 years since the March on Washington. 49 years since the bombing of four girls in a Birmingham church. 48 years since the signing of the Civil Rights Act. 47 years since Bloody Sunday. 47 years since the Voting Rights Act. 
47 years since Malcolm X was killed, 44 years since students at South Carolina State were massacred, 44 years since the assassination of Martin Luther King, 44 years since the signing of the Fair Housing Act, 43 years since conservatives dismantled the Office of Economic Opportunity. 43 years since my parents fought to integrate public schools. Three years since a Barack, whose name means praise the Lord, was sworn in to be president of these United States. Eight years since James Johnson was wrongly incarcerated. Six years since John Manil was wrongfully incarcerated. One year since Troy Davis was murdered by the state. Four months and 11 days since the shooting of Trayvon Martin. Four months since the secret documents revealed by the National Organization on Marriage that they started the same-sex marriage fight, not for moral reasons, but to split the black and LGBT community in order to defeat President Obama. We have been through too much and seen too much and fought for too much. If we ever needed to vote, that's why you're here. But there's one more piece. Not only have we been through too much, there's still too much to fight. 0.4% of African Americans in poverty. 12 million children, red, yellow, black, and white, in poverty. 27 million Americans unemployed. 14% of African Americans unemployed. 49 million of Americans uninsured. One out of every five African Americans uninsured. One million African Americans incarcerated. Politicians can say, elect me, and I'll take your health care. Elect me, and I'll take your voting rights. Elect me, and I'll take your Social Security. Elect me, and I'll resegregate your public schools. Elect me, and I'll ignore your poverty and still get votes. Here we are, 22 million Americans, African Americans, eligible to vote, and yet 8 million didn't vote. 1% of the population controls 42% of the wealth. 10% of the population controls 93% of the wealth. 117 days until election day. And across this nation, the tough times, we've seen an implosion of our economy. Despite the evidence, there are those who want to give pity to billionaires and inflict more pain on the poor. We see politicians that pander to bigots and race baiting, those who've been forced to get on welfare. Never in history has so much money been spent to resist equality. The gross sums of money being spent to take us backwards is lewd, it's pornographic, it's blatant, and it's arrogant. These are troubling times. Corporations are treated like people. People are treated like things. Banks get bailouts from loans with our money with no interest, and then the banks turn around and lend us our money back to us with interest. These are critical times, and if we ever needed to vote, we sure do need to vote now. I don't know if Republicans are going to show up, I don't know if Democrats are going to show up, but the sons and daughters of slaves, we better the hell show up. than we have today. With less, they beat slavery. With less, they beat Jim Crow. With less, they beat lynching. With less, they beat the KKK. With less, Harriet Tubman got 500 slaves out of slavery. She didn't have email. She didn't have text, Facebook. She didn't have sale. She didn't have texting. She didn't even know what Twitter was. She didn't have a car. But she had faith in God. A 38 pistol on her side. Moss on the north side of a tree. And a north star in the middle of the night. She did more with less. We must do more with more. 
So from now until November, email everybody you know. Tell them to show up, because if we ever needed to vote, we sure do need to vote now. Text everybody, tell them to show up. MySpace everybody, tell them to show up. Take some of them friends you don't need to have off Facebook and get some real friends up there. Tell them to show up. Call everybody you know. Knock on everybody's door. I don't know how to tweet, but my children and daughter can tweet. So I told them to tweet, 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 tweet everybody. You know. Because God is not going to do for us what we can do for ourselves. We ever needed to vote? We sure need to vote now. And when we do, Leon, what we're supposed to do, God will show up. God will bless our efforts. He's always has. He always will. When we work our faith, miracles and movements, faith is what you believe about God. Works is what you do because of what you believe about God. Faith without works is destitute and devoid. But faith with works is dynamic and can change your destiny. Whenever we work our faith, God shows up. When Moses stretched out his rod, God showed up. The wind came down. The Red Sea opened up. Pharaoh was brought down. When they marched around Jericho, God showed up. Walls fell down. When David threw the rock, God showed up. Goliath came down. When Daniel went in the lion's den, God showed up. The lions calmed down. When Esther went to see the king, God showed up. Evil plans were turned around. I now ask that you would give a warm welcome to your Dayton Unit President, Derek Forward. It's always great to come to a great NAACP banquet and see so many people uh, come out and support the cause of civil 
in human rights. As, a, as you just had an opportunity to witness, our national political, act, political action chairman, Reverend Barber, on the screen, I think he sent a very powerful message to whatever your party affiliation, whether or not you're Democrat, whether or not you're Republican, whether or not you're independent. He just sent a clear message to use what you got inside your hands to vote. Everyone has been given that privilege to go out and cast their vote for the individual who they feel represents their interests. But I want to tell you one thing about the NAACP, since we've been the ones fighting this cause of civil rights and voting rights for 103 years nationally, for 97 years here locally. We have an opportunity. And when I think about for the word, the, you know, the number 47, 47, this will be our 47th year as African Americans where our votes have been reinstituted to be able to vote. And I was saddened, to be quite frank, when someone wanted to slow down the progress that's been made for 47 years and want to suppress our votes. You just heard a message. If you have not voted already, I would encourage you to go early vote. I would encourage you to get out there in the street side on Monday morning and go and cast your vote for whoever your candidate may be. The Dayton Union NAACP stands poised to lead our community in civil rights and human rights over the next couple of years. I wanted to thank everyone inside this hall today. I don't know if you had an opportunity, but you'll probably see it in tomorrow's newspaper. I'm in my third year as president, or my third term as president. And the members who are in that side of this room has given me an opportunity before our election day, which is on November the 4th, to serve another two years. And I thank you for that. I thank you for entrusting in my leadership to lead this organization. But you can't do it by yourself. The team that I have in place, can my officers please stand up? Because they're the ones, and any executive committee member inside this audience, whether or not you are a chair of a committee or on the executive committee, can you please stand? Because this is your leadership. These are the individuals that lead this great body known as the Dayton Unit NAACP. My duty up here right now is to introduce our two honorary co-chairs. But before I introduce our two honorary co-chairs, you know I always have some kind of surprise. And I have in my hand a community outreach award. Because I think it's always good to recognize, as you see all these sponsors, as you've heard from our uh, Freedom Fund Chair Ludell, if it wasn't for our sponsors who believe in civil and human rights, we wouldn't be at this dinner this evening. So I salute all of our sponsors who, who believe in civil rights and who want to ensure that everything, that everybody has an opportunity uh, inside this nation. But this right here is a community outreach award. And this person doesn't know this, but presented to Key Bank and Stacy Thompson. Come on down, Stacy. These organizations that continue to help us in our uh, fight for civil and human rights, uh, you know, it's unmatched as it relates to other communities. I, now, I can tell you, when I look around this room, the Dayton Unit NAACP has the largest sit-down dinner of any organization in Montgomery County. And that's a testimony to what you believe in and what you value inside this organization, and we thank you. So we, just as a token of appreciation, come on up. This is one of our school board members right here, Ms. Stacy Thompson. Uh, this says the Dayton Unit NAACP 61st Annual Freedom Fund Banquet Community Outreach Award, presented to Key Bank and Stacy Thompson, in recognition of living your values by promoting employee involvement, 
in the community to enhance the quality of life of all Americans. October 26, 2012, signed by Lou Dell Chair, Derek Ford President, celebrate 97 years uh, of civil and human rights services. Thank you for, thank you and Key Bank for what you do. Thank you. As I told our, uh, you know, during our, um, our VIP reception upstairs, I asked, I had a goal. I've been president, like I said, since 2007. And a lot of times, we have corporations that sponsor this event, like you know, like I just spoke of just a little while ago. But during my six years as president, I've had a goal to have two. I challenge the African-American community to step up to the plate and serve as honorary chairs. We have two here this evening to do that. And I'm just so humbled because that's something that was near and dear to my heart because every year I've been president, and there's plenty of African-American businesses, people who are doing well, because what I told them upstairs, don't wait until the Lord blesses you and forget to do this. Give back. We want to make certain that when you're blessed, that you bless others. And these two gentlemen who I'm about to talk, uh, give these awards to are those individuals. They have blessed this organization. So with that, uh, Oscar Blair, can you please come up, sir? You're going to hear from Oscar Blair a little bit later on during the program, but this is Oscar E. Blair, entrepreneur extraordinaire. In recognition for being the honorary chairperson at the Dayton Unit NAACP 61st Annual Freedom Fund Banquet, October 26, 2012, signed by Lou Dell Chair and Derek L. Ford President, celebrating 97 years of human and civil rights services. Mr. Blair, we thank you and we appreciate you and we love you. Thank you. And if I forgot to mention, he's the founder, president, and CEO of Priority Building Services. Also, traveling all the way from Virginia, but have a corporate office here, Mr. Amos L. Otis. Can you come up, sir? I had already secured one honorary chair. I did not know Mr. Otis, as they say, from, from, from anything, from beans, whatever the case may be. I didn't know him. I seen this picture inside of a, uh, the Dayton Business Journal one day. And I said, you know what, I'm going to call this gentleman. And I'm going to have faith that he will step up and meet the challenge that I'm going to ask him for. And Mr. Otis, you helped complete what I set out to do. So we thank you for that. Amos L. Otis, entrepreneur extraordinaire, in recognition for being the honorary chairperson at the Dayton Unit NAACP 61st Annual Freedom Fund Banquet, October 26, 2012, signed by Lou Dell Chair, Derek L. Derek L. Forward President, celebrating 97 years of civil and human rights services. He is the founder, president, and CEO of Sobrand Incorporated, Mr. Otis. So at this time, I would encourage everyone to really Think about what our video presentation just said. Everyone in here, exercise your right to vote. 
It is your right. And people died for you to have that right. So this time we're going to hear from Mr. Amos Otis, founder, president, and CEO of SoBrand Incorporated. To the Honorable Derek Ford, the Honorable Judge Yvette McGee Brown, who I've been speaking with tonight and is a tremendous conversationalist and a very lovely lady, the Honorable Mayor Gary Lightsell, and the Honorable Judy Dodge, and other distinguished members and guests. Allow me to express how honored and proud I am to be part of the celebration of the 97th anniversary of the Dayton NAACP. When asked to participate, I was reluctant to accept, of course, thinking I'm too busy to take on another assignment. My ego had taken over. But immediately I reflected back on my childhood in Montgomery, Alabama, when the NAACP, an organization and its members, along with SCLC, stood in the face of danger simply for asking for our constitutional rights. What the community was asking for was simply the right to vote, the right for an equal education, the right for equal justice under the law. I reflected on how the NAACP was there at the voter registration office when black citizens paid their poll tax and then were rejected because they couldn't answer the question, how many bubbles were in a bar of soap? So if you ever ask that question, the answer is this, many. <laughs> However, we are still faced with the same circumstances. It has been made more subtle and refined. You must now produce a valid government-issued ID, shorten days and hours for voting, and billboards whose message are designed to intimidate voters of the minority groups. Now let me share with you, in closing, not from a religious context, but to simply emphasize the importance that we each have an absolute responsibility to vote. Mm -hmm. And equally as important, to encourage everyone we know and everyone we come in contact with to vote. I would like to sh state this one thing and share it with you. My grandfather, Leon Fagans, a very wonderful man who reared me, though he didn't have an education, mm -hmm. would take me up to the front of the church, Ralph Street Christian Church, and sit me on the deacon's pew with him. And I will never forget the song my grandfather would lead. And that song has set the course of direction for my life and responsibility. That song goes like this. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? There's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. The cross today is a step up to the responsibility of voting, no matter how difficult it may seem, and encourage others to vote. We owe this to those who have sacrificed and all of those who have died to give us this right of citizenship. So don't be angry, don't be contentious, just vote. Thank you very much. Amen. Mr. Otis and Mr. Blair, thank you for being our honorary chairs this evening. This part of the program now, we would like to do presentations, and I'd ask that Ms. Diane Lewis, would, I mean Williams, excuse me, would come forward for our life membership presentation.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge our lifetime members tonight. Would you please stand? All lifetime members. Remain standing. Um, we would like our sponsors to stand. All our sponsors, please stand. And finally, we like just our members to stand. All of our members remain standing. We would like you to look around, and those who are not standing, we would like you to encourage them to join the NAACP tonight. You may sit down. Thank you. I would like to uh, go on with our ceremony and um, recognize our Silver Life membership. Okay. Would all the um, Silver Life members that are going to be honored tonight please Come up to the podium, please, on my left. Okay, we'll just get started. Um, our first Silver Life membership would be Josie E. Bedell. Josie Bedell. Our next honoree will be DATV. DATV. Please come up. All right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Our next honoree will be Ina M. Green. Ina, please come up. She's been so helpful throughout the year at her church, and she helps with the membership. And we really appreciate that, Ina. Our next honoree will be Dr. Talbert L. Grooms. Talbert, please come up. Thank you. The next one would be Nodam Iheen. Nodam Iheen. Please uh, come up to the podium at this time. Thank you. The next one would be Debbie Lieberman. I'm spelling that right. Debbie, hi Debbie. Welcome. The next one will be Claudia L. Mason. Claudia? Please come up, and thank you. The next one would be Sharon Swartz Newhart. Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Welcome. Thank you. The next one would be Mark E. Owens. Mark, please come up. Thank you. Honored to have you, Mark. Next one will be Amos L. Otis. Welcome. Thank you so much. Our next one will be Brenda Willis Otis. Brenda, please come up as well to be recognized. Thank you. Our next will be Wendell. Robbie Wendell, am I spelling that right? Please come up, Wendell. Our next one will be Pastor William B. Schooler. Thank you, please come up. Welcome, congratulations. Our next one will be Jim Thomas, AKA JT, Jim Thomas, 
please come up. Welcome. We thank you. Our next one is an honor, Congressman Mike Turner. Mike, please come down to the podium. We thank you very much. Welcome. And our last Silver Life membership will be Dave Vohr. Dave, please come down. We welcome you. Thank you. These are our Silver Life members. We welcome you. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Okay, uh, and our last one here would be a Diamond Life membership. And this is very special to me because he is my mentor. He is one of the first person to receive this award. And not only that, he is the first president of the NAACP to receive this reward. And I would like everyone to stand up and honor the most honorable Derek L. Ford for the Diamond Life membership. Thank you. May God bless you and may God bless the NAACP. And we know that an organization is, cannot continue without the youth. And so now I ask that Ms. Perkins would come forward for the Youth Achievement Awards. Good evening. Um, in any organization, you have to start at the beginning and at the beginning is our youth. And we've had some outstanding youth go through the doors of the Dayton NAACP and move on to bigger and better things. They've worked hard at community service. They've worked hard with voters registration, census, um, helping to feed the community. So as I've always said, there are some good kids out there. They don't always get the praises they deserve, but we do have a lot of them. This year, we've got uh, six that are going to be moving on. They're, they're gra uh, graduating this year. And uh, we're going to give a, a gift to the three past uh, officers of the Youth Council. And we'll say that until after, th after things are are done here to move things along and keep us on time. But I'd like to recognize Rajay Perkins, President, Dayton NAACP Youth Council. Rajay, would you stand up? First Vice President, Denzel Hollis. And I don't know if Denzel is here tonight. Uh, the past uh, secretary and treasurer, Savannah Smith. And Savannah is also a scholarship recipient this year. And I, think, I don't think she's here because her mother has been ill. But those are three of the past officers and current officers. And uh, they will move on from high school on to college. And of the six that are in our organization, all of them are going to college. At least they've all applied to college, and I'm sure they'll all be accepted. So thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause for the youth. Good evening, everyone.
everyone, I'm sorry about my voice. Um, we are going to be presenting an award tonight and I'm just introducing my president. I'm the advisor of the Junior Youth Council and the president is Tanea Bailey. Welcome to the 97th Dayton Unit in the ACP Freedom Fund Banquet. I'm Tanea Bailey, president of the Little John Junior Youth Council. I want to give an award to someone that I know and love, and it says, for your exemplary leadership and selfless acts of your time and dedication to the youth, your attention to detail and outstanding worth ethics will help mold us into better leaders in the future. I want to say thank you from my heart to a man that will always be there to help us. And this award goes to Derek L. Ford. Thank you. <laughs> well, I know as growing up uh, with the NAACP, AXO was a very important and integral part of the youth aspect of the NAACP, so I would ask that Cedric would come forward to give his presentation. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm the new chairman of the AXO program. I'd like to ask my staff to come forward. Uh, we were very blessed this year with our youth to uh, represent the Dayton community in the uh, AXO competition in Houston, Texas. And we had 10 uh, local gold medalists to represent the Dayton NAACP unit. Uh, if any students or parents came out tonight, uh, please come forward. Um, I'll just introduce uh, the winners of the local competition. We were fortunate also to have two national medalists as well. Uh, the winners of the gold local competition was Ryan Crawford in the category of music instrumental classical, Tierra Hayes in the category of music vocal contemporary, Savannah Smith in the category of original essay photography, Brittany Davis Rowe in the category of Earth and Space Science. We had uh, Marquise Mahaffey in the category of Dramatics, Denzel Hollis in the category of Music, Instrumental Contemporary, and Music Composition. We had Moses Greathouse in the category of Poetry. And we had Brittany Jones in the category of Entrepreneurship Business and our two national medalists in the category of computer science was Eliza Strauder. And we have Takesha Hankins in the category of engineering. So that's a lot of uh, awards for the locals. we just like to give them a round of hands. And uh, I believe we have some parents to come forward to uh, take a brief picture. But again, I'd just like to congratulate the youth on doing a wonderful job representing the city of Dayton, the NAACP. And um, I'm honored to uh, serve and be the chairperson of the next group as well. Thank you. I'd now ask that 
Mr. Willie Terrell would come forward to give our scholarship presentations. Good evening, everyone. My name is Willie A. Terrell, Jr., and I uh, chaired the souvenir booklet, and I want you to turn to page 41. And please, we ask you to support those people that supported us in our souvenir booklet. We really appreciate their support. Also, uh, a second note, a second note, uh, as you know, our Mistress of Ceremony, Shannon Sims, She's done an outstanding job so far. Let's give her a hand. And for those of you who do not know, uh, Shannon has partnered with Dayton Public Schools, specifically the Dayton Boys Prep School. Uh, she helped coordinate a tie project where every student in that school received a tie. So let's give Shannon another hand for coordinating that. I'm a volunteer at the Dayton Boys School, and the staff, the students, they really appreciate the ties, and they are wearing those ties like young men. Thank you again, Shannon. Uh, we have some scholarships to recognize, and the criteria for the scholarship was, first of all, they needed a minimum of a 2.5, a recommendation from a teacher, counselor, or principal, and they needed to uh, have a fourth quarter report card to verify whatever they accumulate might be or their GPA. And the GPA is the grade, grade point average, and they need to have at least a 2.5. As you already heard, uh, Savannah Smith is not here, and she received the Jesse O. Gooding Scholarship. Jesse uh, is here, but Savannah's not here, though. I'm sorry. And for those of you that are here and know the word of prayer, let's pray for Savannah's mom, because she is our, one of our VPs from the NAACP and does an outstanding job. So please, when you uh, close your eyes and get on your knees tonight, please say a special prayer for Sister Rosa Smith. Next, we want to recognize uh, Guerra. Bruno and her mother, Monique Collins. Uh, Guerra is going to get the Miley O. Williamson Scholarship, and uh, she will be attending Miami University. Jesse, you want to come down? And Gara is a student at Thurgood Marshall, an outstanding student. As you can see, she's also in the ROTC. Our next scholarship recipient is Ryan Crawford, and her mother's name is Nicole Crawford, and she plans on attending the University of Cincinnati, and she's going to receive the Laverne Gooding Scholarship. Let's give her a hand, and her mom. and Ryan attends Stiver School for the Arts.
and the uh, Jesse O. Gooding, the Vern Gooding, and Miley O. Williams Scholarship is worth $1,000. The next scholarship recipient is Raquel Gonzalez, and her mom uh, is here, and we'd like for uh, Lisa and Rick Gonzalez to come up, please. She is a recipient of the Derek L. Ford Scholarship. This scholarship is worth $1,500. And she also attends Stiver's School for the Arts. and she will be attending Central Michigan University. And for your information, even though Savannah is not here, uh, she attends Stiver's School for the Arts. Also, one final thing, on behalf of the NAACP, President Ford, and our NAACP Scholarship Committee, We'd like to thank Speedway and Tom Forder for their contribution to the scholarship fund. And again, I want to thank the scholarship committee and the committee would like for you to look at page 41 and support those that support us. Again, thank you for your time and consideration. The NAACP would like to recognize those who work hard in the community, so I ask that Reverend Herman Branham come forward for the Community Service Award. Good evening. That was, I was kind of quiet out there. Good evening. Good evening. All right. it, it's my uh, lot and my responsibility, and also it's a privilege as well as an honor to be able to present our um, Leadership Award or for is when it comes to our Community Service Award to uh, these two individuals. And one thing I would say in reference to that is these two individuals uh, are well known in the community due to the fact that their father was uh, a judge here in Dayton for many years and uh, was a mayor here, uh, with the first African American mayor here in the city of Dayton. Uh, here, in, uh, here in Dayton, Ohio, and we uh, realized that of all of his contributions throughout that period of time, while we was going through crisis as Afro-American community, he was always there and uh, uh, making sure that, you know, rights or civil rights and things was held up because of who he was, very humble, very giving, and uh, individual, and one who, you know, just loved, you know, doing what he was doing because he believed in his work. And also, uh, we have a street named after him, and that being uh, James H. McGee, you know, Boulevard here. And uh, we see where his two daughters is also, they are following the same footsteps that their dad uh, was in, and they're following his footsteps. And also, we want to realize, too, to recognize that our headquarters here in Dayton, Ohio, we are housed in his building. And we thank uh, his daughters uh, for allowing us to continue to be there. And during the whole time we've been there, they just, uh, they have not raised our rent. They just take minimum rent. <laughs> Amen. Because they know we're struggling. And we certainly uh, appreciate that because uh, uh, you know, we all are working together in this one community. And if they did, I don't know, we would be in trouble. But I thank uh, God for them. And it's my pleasure and my privilege at this time uh, to uh, be able to present, you know, this uh, award, which is the Community Service Award, to that of the Honorable Francis E. McGee and also the Magistrate Annette McGee. I'd ask you to come forward this time. And I'd like to just echo uh, these sentiments, uh, you know, that is, it's a humbling experience to be able to sit in the chair where their father once sat. 
Not only was he uh, the first African-American mayor inside of this community, uh, but he was also a president of the NAACP here in Dayton. So it's an honor for me uh, to actually sit in his seat, in his chair, in his office to serve this community. So with that, uh, we have an award for both sisters. And they both read the same, but so I'm just going to read one, and uh, the names are different, of course. So the Dayton Unit NAACP 61st Annual Freedom Fund Banquet Community Service Award, presented to the Honorable Francis E. McGee and Magistrate Annette, Magistrate Annette McGee Wright, in appreciation for your caring, thoughtful, and loving spirit to maintain a legacy of your father the late Mayor James H. McGee, providing reasonable accommodations to the Dayton unit in NAACP. Throughout the years, you have been a blessing to the Dayton unit in NAACP by not increasing the rent, <laughs> even through tough economic times. The kindness you have exemplified has allowed the Dayton unit in NAACP to advance the cause of civil and human rights in the Dayton community. You are truly a champion for justice. Can we rise and, and uh, uh, you know, show these two sisters some appreciation here? We want to thank you all for the, uh, to the members of the Dayton Unit of the um, NAACP for this award. Um, we believe that service is the price you pay for the blessings you've been given. We have been more blessed than many, and we feel that it is our right to give back to the community. So we are appreciative of this award and we echo what everyone else has said, please go out and vote, vote the whole ballot, make sure you know what the, um, the issues are, and remember to tell the story, because we are the people who struggle to vote and others, based upon our struggles, um, follow suit. So please remember to vote. This was near to our father, this was near to many of the people here on the dais, um, and Let's make it a successful year. Thank you. Thank you. And as we continue with our award ceremony, I ask that President Ford would come forward to give the presentation of the President's Award. I deeply count it an honor to stand before you today to present the President's Award you know, to a man who, as you see inside of your book, a man of faith, valor, and integrity. You know, someone who has stood the course, someone who lived through times where he was the only African American serving on the Montgomery County Sheriff, or one of a few, you know, but stood the test of time to show other people how you can live inside of this world, know how to get along with people, and be successful in your career. And that's exactly what this man has done. A man of faith, valor, 
and integrity. And it gives me honor to present this President's Award to him. Dayton Unit NAACP 61st Annual Freedom Fund Banquet. President's Award presented to Edward T. Dixon, affectionately known as Dodo, for your inspiring, encouraging, and motivating words of wisdom, your dedication and commitment to civil and human rights is unmatched and has manifested itself as you swore to protect and serve every citizen of Montgomery County. You are devoted and faithful to family and friends, but more importantly, to Jesus Christ. You have stood by my side, not wavering, but encouraging me to stay the course, oftentimes referring to me as your son. You have demonstrated your support and loyalty throughout my tenure as president. For that, I am grateful. Continue to pursue justice and equality for all Americans, a man of faith, valor, and integrity. Signed by Lou Dell, Chair Derek L. Ford, President, celebrating 97 years of civil and human rights services. Mr. Dixon, it's an honor to have met you and to be a part of your life. Please stand and recognize this man. Mr. President, Derek Floyd, my friend through the years, I come to you tonight to feel humble just to be in the room of civil rights, those who are living and those who have passed on. I can recall with Miley Williamson at Bethel Baptist Church in 1963, we met, and Medgar Evers was the field secretary for Jackson. Two weeks later, the demon crossed the world who was still active, took his life. I promised then to Miley, and Brother McGee, my dear friend, we will fight till fighting days are over. When I think of Martin, I think of the girls in Birmingham, Rosa Parks. We're all civil rights. I can't go into the name. You know who they are. But I must say this to you. We have not finished yet. Don't get tied down. Don't get tied down. We've got work to do. You tell them folks you know who I'm talking about. The master says he took him in in eight, and he ain't going to forget him in 12. I'm here to say, yeah. My wife told me two minutes. I have to obey her. She's been telling me that for 59 years. <laughs> but that's all right. I loved it because I stayed tight. <laughs> so my civil rights brothers and sisters, especially to our speaker tonight, I know about our speaker. I was playing football for Miami. And we lost down at OU. I remember him. But I want to tell you this. The strength of our president, the strength of the presidents before, Jess Gooding, McGee, Bowman, all the way down the line. The fight has just begun. And I'll tell you this. Don't get amnesia. Go before the six comes and take care of business.
it's hard to follow up after that. But he gives two minutes a whole new meaning to me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dixon. We appreciate your service. And thank you again for giving us a whole new meaning of two minutes. <laughs> I would now like to present the next person who will give us an introduction of our keynote speaker. And after that, we will hear a music, musical selection. And from then, we will hear the words of our keynote speaker. Just want to interject some. I just want to know if Richard Alston is here this evening. He was a former president of the NAACP. From my understanding, he is here. Don't see him. Okay, thank you. Mr. Blair, if you could please come forward. Good evening. still modeling at our last speaker <laughs> and I am still excited and anticipating what's to come before I introduce this magnificent woman I just want to take an opportunity to tell you that tonight I, I had the chance to have my picture taken with a congressman. I, um, I had a chat with the mayor. I had the chance to, to hug the sheriff and I had the opportunity to shake the hands of a lot of elected officials that's running and long-term in office. And I just want to tell you that I've done all of these things and I think only the NAACP under the guidance of our Lord can afford somebody like me an opportunity to be in this environment. So I'm glad today. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about this thing. I'm, I'm ready to shout with you. Because only God can do that and only INAACP has put us in a privileged place. And so we thank them. Nothing I've done Nothing I'm worthy of. I look out and I see my associates with Priority Building Services. I see my church members scattered throughout, and I'm happy. I'm ready to shout for joy. I'm ready to give God glory because I'm just a little old boy from Pine Haven Project in Daytona Beach, Florida. And now I'm standing before you today saying, how you doing, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Congressman, you look good today. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Only God can do that. And so I'm happy today. I'm ready to shout glory, hallelujah. I'm ready to hear the words of the speaker of the hour. Let me tell you something. A bio says that she's a woman of first. It says that a series of first defines the judicial career of Justice Yvette McGee Brown. She was the first African American elected to the Franklin County Domestic Relations Juvenile Court. In January 2011, she became the African-American woman to serve as justice on the Supreme Court of Ohio. 
and there's another first. And I met her about three hours ago. And that was a first for her. <laughs> Amen. But let me tell you, she was as warm and as gracious and as charming as anybody that I've ever met in my life. And she's a justice on this great Supreme Court of this great state of ours. Only God can do something like that. Only the NAACP can put us in a position where Pine Haven Project, this product, can meet someone of such high stature. And so I'm happy tonight. I can't wait to hear what she's got to say. And so I just want you to know that after this next musical selection, I want you to join her, join me in welcoming her. And if you would, would you repeat after me? If you would join me and repeat after me, Justice McGee Brown, we welcome and greet you in love. Speak to us tonight as only you can. So my brothers and my sisters, the next voice you hear after this musical selection will be that of the Honorable Yvette McGee Brown, Justice for the Supreme Court of Ohio and the Ohio judicial system. Let the church say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening to all of the dignitaries and to all of you who make up this great audience. You all look beautiful. Give yourselves a hand. Now, I know we're in the midst of a huge election, but I stand here this evening to declare that I already have the victory. I am already a winner. And it is in him that I live, move, and have my being.
close to the Lord. So whatever your problem, let him have it. I think we ought to just listen to Jennifer some more. My goodness. All right, if we got the victory, I'm claiming that, my sister. All right, well, hello, Dayton NAACP. It is my privilege to be with you this evening and to thank Mr. Forward for the opportunity and the dais guest here, Mr. Dixon. I should just sit down. You set a high bar for me to reach tonight. I have to tell you, I've been teasing Mr. Otis down here about Kappa men. And as soon as Mr. Dixon finished, he said he's a noop. <laughs> well, you see, when I was in college at OU, I, I'm an AKA, and a noop broke my heart. <laughs> so I ain't never had good feelings about Kappa men. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Otis been trying to convince me that that was an aberrant one and that they get ready to kick him out the fraternity. And so based on Mr. Otis and Mr. Dixon, I might have to revise my opinion of the Kappa man. Let me also say to Senator Tom Roberts, who has known me since I was a 25-year-old lawyer, I've watched him in the legislature, and you know something? My grandmother used to always say, you treat people good because you never know when you're going to meet them again. And that is Senator Roberts, a man of class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to my sister friend out there, I know you're there somewhere, Ryan McLean. Where are you? Amen. Stand up, Ryan McLean. That is my heart right there. 
Ryan always makes sure she sends me a little text when she thinks I might be weary just to say hang in there. I love that woman. She is a mighty force, Dayton. You are blessed to have her. And I learned, I learned about public service from C.J. McClinn. I learned what it means to be, do service through C.J. McClinn. And then to my sister McGee's, I get this question all the time. We are not related. I, I didn't know my daddy, but I don't think it was Mayor McGee. I want to declare that. So if there's any resemblance, it's just coincidental. And then it's so interesting to hear Mr. Blair say a person of high stature, you grew up in the projects in Florida, I grew up in the projects in Columbus. And so this is no person of high stature here. My mother was a teenage parent. My father was gone before I was born. She had two children after me and their fathers didn't stick around either. So when you talk about grace and blessing being in this place, I think about what President Obama says that only in America is my story even possible? So I'm going to talk to you a little bit tonight about history is in your hands. I do, however, because I am on the Supreme Court, need to make a couple of disclosures. I want to be clear that anything I say tonight is not conveying how I might vote on a future case. It is not giving an endorsement of anyone or any cause that everything I am saying is about us. And so if anybody wants to walk out here and misconstrue what I might say or try to file a disciplinary complaint, let me just make it clear. I am talking to us about us, and I am not going to tell you to vote for anybody except me. Amen. So. As you have heard people say, vote, do it early. I am Yvette McGee Brown, and I approve of that message. <laughs> Let me just say, Mr. Forward, you have a huge crowd here. I have spoken at NAACP dinners across the state. And I'm going to hate to go back and tell George Forbes that you outdid Cleveland. We're going to have to break the news to him. Dayton's got it going on here. So let me start my remarks in this way. It's been said that those who don't understand their history are doomed to repeat it. Have those words ever been more true than now? You have heard previous speakers reference that we have gone from poll taxes and writing tests to voter fraud legislation and photo IDs. It is time for us to remember how we got to this place and to be vigilant about making sure that every person has the right to cast their ballot. We are sitting in a time of great change and great opportunity. But if you might allow me to suggest that we have gotten into this place because we've been so impressed with ourselves. We have been able to sit in corporate offices and hold public offices that we thought the fight was over. And so while we were busy celebrating in 2008, other people were working. Don't misunderstand that if you want to protect the freedoms that the NAACP started, you have to be vigilant every day. I mean, think about this. In 1909, 60, 60 men and women, both black and white, came together to create the NAACP to protect social justice and the liberties of the Negro, is what they called them then. The country, imagine what courage that took. Imagine, if you can, with me, what 1909 must have been like for the African-American person. It was a hostile place for blacks and for women. Women could not vote. Black men, despite being given the right to vote by the 15th Amendment in 1870, really could not vote. It was but an illusory right. 
And it's against that backdrop that 60 men and women stood up and said, we are going to fight for the future. You know the hardest thing to do in life sometimes is to fight for a cause that you may never live to see accomplished. And yet those 60 men and women led by W.E.B. Du Bois refused to be deterred about what they knew was right, and so they stood up. And all of those well-meaning people, think about it. Think about if they didn't have the courage that so many of us take for granted, who are unwilling to speak out on our jobs, speak out in our neighborhoods, because we're afraid somebody might get the wrong idea or somebody might ostracize us. Think about those 60 men and women. What if they had remained silent? What if they had said, nothing we can do about ending segregation? What if the abolitionists had said, you know what, we've had slavery in this country for 400 years, nothing we can do to end it. What if Susan B. Anthony and other women had said, who are we to stand up and fight for women to have the right to vote? The 19th Amendment would never have happened. I thank God that there are well-meaning people who are willing to devote their life to a cause that they may never live to see accomplished. Because what we know and what the NAACP knew in 1909 is that great accomplishments, they take time, they take tenacity, and ladies and gentlemen, they take strategy. We are so quick to get emotional, to stand up in our churches, to talk to our friends, and be emotional about what's happening to us. But how many times have we sat down and developed a game plan like the NAACP? Do you know the reason that I can stand in this place as your first African-American woman on the Supreme Court? It took 208 years to get me here. Do you know how I can stand here? It's because the NAACP. It's the NAACP. When the United States Supreme Court in 1896, in Plessy versus Ferguson, declared that the law of the land was separate but equal, it was the NAACP that developed a strategy. Now, I love it. I speak at a lot of law schools. And I love when people ask me about, quote, activist courts. And I take them back to 1896. And I said, I've read the U.S. Constitution. They're in it. Say separate but equal. Did you consider that an activist court? Think about that. 1896. And so what the NAACP said is we got to develop a strategy. If the law of the land is separate but equal, then let's make them prove it. And so... They got the famed dean from Howard University Law School, Charles Hamilton Houston. And they got Charles Hamilton Houston to raise up a generation of scholars. And they started to attack, state by state, the separate but equal doctrine. They didn't sit around in their living rooms and cry about it. They may have been in church and prayed about it, but they had a strategy because they understood that separate can never be equal. It's like going through a divorce. You can't live as good as two as you do as one. It's math. So if the law of the land is separate but equal, what they said, what Charles Hamilton Houston and his lawyers did, they started in Texas and Alabama and Oklahoma and went to Maryland and Missouri, and each time they challenged the state to prove that separate was equal. And when they could not prove it, they kept appealing until 18, or 1954, when they got to Brown versus the Board of Education. And the United States Supreme Court said that separate but equal cannot be constitutionally sustained and is no longer the law of this land. And guess what? People called that court activists. But led by a team of Thurgood Marshall and many, many others, they change the course of history. So I want to ask you, what is history going to look back on us and say? When history evaluates this moment, what are they going to say about us? 
There are people who paid the price for our ability to get dressed up and sit in this place, white next to black, Jew next to Christian. They paid the price for us to be here. Ordinary people. Yes, there were the names that you knew, Medgar and Malcolm and Rosa, but there were the names you didn't know. The people who ironed shirts, who swept floors, who cleaned houses and took care of other people's babies. People who worked in restaurants, always believing that the future could be better. People like Mae Bertha Carter from the Mississippi Delta, who promised herself that her four youngest children would not follow her and her nine older children into the cotton fields of Mississippi. And so, when the Civil Rights Act of 1965 was passed, she dared to try to integrate the Mississippi schools. She was a sharecropper, she and her husband, they didn't have much, but she was willing to sacrifice everything to give her four youngest children the right to a public education. And so, with threats on their life, bullets shot into the windows of their house, their land being taken, she stood strong, she and her husband and her four children graduated from the Drew County Schools. And may Bertha Carter live long enough to see her youngest daughter grow up to become the president of that very school board that sought to deny her access. Is God good? Those are the people I don't want you to forget because I think about what would those 60 men and women from 1909 think about us if they looked in now? What would they say about what we've done with the legacy they left us? Yes, they'd be proud we have our first African-American president. Yes, they'd be proud that we have made strides, but I think their heart would hurt for how we have left so many behind. How many of our children are still trapped in poverty? How many of our young men and increasingly young women populate the criminal justice system? How many of our children don't graduate from high school and yet we sit in the stands every Friday night applauding them for throwing a ball, bouncing a basketball, or hitting a bat. How we have moved away from academic excellence and holding our children accountable and telling them that their brain is gonna take them a lot further than any brawn they might have. We have made our expectation. We have made our expectation for our children that they can be the next LeBron James, but we haven't put any work into that product. We have not explained to them that he didn't just wake up as LeBron James. Nobody was with him when he was dribbling a thousand baskets a day. We have taken our eye off the ball. We've been so focused on accumulating assets and acquiring stuff that we forgot what our people gave us was in here. We forgot to give our kids drive, to give them respect, to teach them that who they are, the name that they carry matters. And I think that if W.E.B. Du Bois and the other 59 people from 1909 came back, they would not be pleased with what we have done. So what I'm gonna ask you to do tonight is if you're gonna think about history, don't leave here self-congratulating yourself just for voting. I want you to leave here and think about how you're gonna build the history for the generation to follow. I know about Dayton School. Schools. I know what we need to do. I'm a Columbus Public Schools kid. Let me tell you something. We got to quit blaming teachers. Teachers aren't letting our kids down. It is parents, people who are having children before they can get a driver's license. <laughs> we got to hold ourselves accountable. Listen, listen, when I went to Mifflin High School, I grew up in the Brittany Hills area of Columbus, Ohio. There weren't many fathers that lived in my neighborhood, but when I went to school, I went to a segregated school 
We had five hours of education a day. I went to middle school from 1 to 6 in the evening, and I went to high school from 7.30 to 12.30. The same building. But you know what I had? I had a mother who, despite being a mother as a teenager and having to work two jobs, one in a factory, the other cleaning an office building at night, a mother whose greatest hope for me is that I would graduate high school not pregnant. Just she modeled moral behavior. She didn't run men in and out of our house. She modeled excellence for education. She never missed a parent, teacher, a band concert, a dance recital, or a football game. What I'm telling you is, it's not the teachers. If a child is taught to love learning, they will learn where they are. The reason I'm in this place is that teachers at Mifflin High School, we didn't have a lot, but they saw something in me before I could see it in myself, and they kept me from making mistakes that would ruin my life. My guidance counselor saw me in the hallway, fasting around with my high school boyfriend. And I was fast. And he was cute. But she walked right up to me. She stuck her arm through mine and walked me away from him. And she said to me, you are too smart not to go to college. I thank God for that woman. I couldn't give her anything. Nobody in my family had been to college at that point. She was the first person to make me believe that college was possible for me. And she saved me from him. I've seen him. <laughs> What's cute at 16 don't always last to 50. I owe her many things. <laughs> but this is the thing. You never know when you are willing to speak hope and opportunity into a child's life how you might change it. So I want to implore you to be that beacon for the next child. You don't know who you're talking to that might be the next Yvette McGee Brown or the next Derek Forward or the next Mr. Blair or Mr. Otis or Mr. Dixon. You have to be willing to speak to them and say, baby, I believe in you. I know that you can be anybody you want to be. And let me caution you with this. When I say the fight has changed, understand you've got to read Michelle Alexander's book, Jim Crow, the 21st century Jim Crow. When I tell you that the game has gotten more sophisticated while we've been celebrating, you read Michelle Alexander's book. She calls the correction system the new plantation system. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, and understand this. We have to vote to protect our rights. We have to vote to protect people who don't understand how important it is for them to go to the polls. You know, the irony is that the people who are impacted most are the ones that don't vote. So I'm going to close by saying this to you. When you leave here today, not only do I want you, when you go to the polls, to take somebody else with you, I want you to find somebody who's struggling, that you can speak hope and opportunity into their life, that you can come back to this dinner next year congratulating yourself, not just for being a member of the NAACP, but doing the work that the NAACP calls us to do. Amen. Let's not forget, let's not forget May Bertha Carter and the thousands of people like her. And let's commit ourselves that we're going to start being strategic so that when history looks back on this moment, and they will, history will write about this moment, that we will be proud of what history has to say about us. And we will honor the legacy left by those 60 brave men and women in 1909. I'm Yvette McGee Brown, and I approve this message. Thank you. Whoa!
Whoa! Whoa! She left us a message. She left us a message. There's one thing I want to say before I present this to our justice. It's some that are our NAACP's chairman of the National Board of Directors says, courage will not skip this generation. Amen. Courage will not skip this generation. That's all the way from Baltimore, Maryland, by ways of Roslyn McAllister Brock. Justice, here's what we have for you. It says, Dayton Unit NAACP 61st Annual Freedom Fund Banquet Keynote Speaker Award presented to the Honorable Justice Yvette McGee Brown. In recognition of your innovative, pioneering, and courageous leadership, which has held countless citizens of these United States accountable for their actions, especially as it relates to welfare, to the welfare of children and families. Keep igniting the flame of justice and equality for all Americans. Sister, history is in your hand. Your power, your decision, vote. Again, let's give a round of applause, a standing ovation, should I say, to the Honorable Amen. Yvette McGee-Brown. We have some guests that I'd like to take just a minute of your time to honor. We have two women representing the Nigerian Women's Cultural Organization, and I would ask that they stand and that we give them a round of applause. And as we conclude our program tonight, I'd ask that the Wayne High School Air Force Junior ROTC Color Guard would come
And before we do the benediction, I would like to welcome you all to take part in the president's reception following this in room 103 directly behind you. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to leave this banquet, I am reminded of a parable found in the Holy Bible. Luke 10th chapter, verses 25 through 37. It tells a story about a man who is beaten, robbed, and left to die. He's on the road that leads from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now this is not the Jericho where the walls come tumbling down. This man lies there in need of help, lying there in his own blood. Jesus says a priest of the temple of Jerusalem, a highly respected leader, when he sees the Samaritan man in need of help, he crossed over to the other side of the street. A Levite, a temple official, one stepped down from the priest. He crossed over to the other side. A man, Jesus says, a, a man Jesus called not his name, Jesus just said, a man, a good Samaritan, picked up the victim, put him on his donkey, took him to an inn after bandaging him up, and assured the innkeeper, whatever the man was in need of, take care of him, I'll provide you the money when I'm on my way back home. Let us, as we leave this 61st NAACP banquet, let us be worthy to be mentioned as Good Samaritans. When the roll is called up yonder, people may not know your name or the good you do for others, but surely the Lord knows your good work. Now unto him, the one that shed his blood at Calvary, now unto him, the one that laid in a borrowed tomb, now unto him, the one that rose early on the third day, the one that is able to keep you from falling, the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty and glory, forever. Amen.